Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to St. James Reflection at 10 o'clock, and uh, for the people who are watching on Zoom and Facebook later. It's great to see you. What a wonderful sunny day it's been, and I hope you enjoyed the walk in. I, I know I did, and uh, I thank God for the beautiful views, even though we're walking on streets. It was a wonderful start to the day, so I feel blessed. So I'm going to start with opening prayer. This is another day, O oh Lord. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me to stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, help me to do it gallant, gallantly. Make these words more than words and give me the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Now let us have a time of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Good morning again. And um, this is the last part of being the child of God. We're going to focus on looking at how our status as God's children can never be taken away from us. May God give us confidence and joy today in our new identity in him. And may we see how powerful his sacrificial love is today as we make space to see and live out our identity as eternal children of a good God. Jenny's going to bring us the scripture. And then I will carry on with the reflection. Today's scripture is from John 10, 22 to 30, but it's from the Message Bible, so it's a paraphrase, and that sometimes really helps us to grasp the meaning. They were celebrating Hanukkah just then in Jerusalem. It was winter. Jesus was strolling in the temple across Solomon's porch. The Jews circling him said, how long are you going to keep us guessing? If you are the Messiah, tell us straight out. Jesus answered, I told you, but you didn't believe. Everything I have done has been authorized by my father. Actions that speak louder than words. You don't believe because you're not my sheep. My sheep recognize my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them real and eternal life. They are protected from the destroyer for good. No one can steal them from out of my hand. The father who put them under my care is so much greater than the destroyer and thief. No one could ever get away from him, get them away from him. I and the father are one heart and mind. Thank you, Jenny. As a disciple of Jesus, we have full assurance of eternal face-to-face -face relationship with our Heavenly Father. It says in Romans 10, 9, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, which means we will always be a child of God. No sin, struggle, trial, or rebellion can pluck us from the Father's hand. And as children of God, we no longer look to this world, but to our total restoration, redemption, and glorification as our source of hope. There is peace and transcendent joy in the truth that this world is not our final resting place. Your pains and trials are temporary and pale in comparison to the incredible life that awaits you in heaven with your family. Romans 8, 38, 39 says, For I am sure that neither death, 
nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ Jesus our Lord. Rest in the fact that you are fully and constantly loved by your Creator. Nothing you or any, anyone else could ever do has the power to pluck you from his hand. God made salvation as simple and complete as possible. Once you have been saved and brought into the kingdom of God, you are forever saved. In Titus 3, 4-7 it says, But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us. Not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Saviour. So that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hopes of eternal life. Your salvation is about the grace of your Father, not your own works. If salvation ever became about our own strength, it would cease to be rooted in God's loving grace and rest on our shoulders instead of the death of Jesus. Placing our hope in eternal relationship with our Father is the path to freedom from the cares and burdens of this world. We will never truly know abundant life until we live surrendered to our King and Saviour and lay the crowns and cares of this life at his feet. This world is not your home. This world is not meant to be your highest satisfaction. Pursue greater depths of relationship with your Father and watch as the stress and cares of this world fall off in light of his glorious grace. Place your hope in him alone and follow his leading to an abundant life free from the worries, doubts and fears that come from living for the world instead of Jesus. I just want to leave you with this, these verses from Romans 5, 2 to 5, and hope it ignites a lifestyle of continual surrender and pursuit of restored relationship with your Father. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Amen. We're now going to carry on with some prayer, and Jenny's going to lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for that reminder that nothing can separate us from your love. Nothing, Lord. Help us to really carry that forward in front of our minds each moment of every day so that when we're faced with things we find difficult, we can remember that fact. Lord, we bring before you our community, firstly our church. Thank you for this wonderful family that we belong to that we are part of. As humans, we are bundles of belonging and we need each other. So thank you, Lord, for what we have here. And may we be able to spread that love and that sense of belonging to those outside in our community. We are all connected to a vast network of people in, in different ways, through different relationships. And we pray that you would fill us with your spirit, that your love may pour out into those networks of relationships. We thank you, Lord, for Citizens Advice, for Jim's Cafe, for CAP, for all those that are working for charities and for the benefit of those in need. Bless and protect our community, Lord. For New Barnet, East Barnet, and this area that we are part of, may we be your hands and feet in this place. Lord, we bring before you all those that we know that are struggling, those who are suffering with mental health, with bodily ill health, 
with financial problems and strains and stresses that the world brings upon us. Lift up to, to the Lord now those on your heart and mind who need your touch today. Lord, in your mercy, we pray that you would just pour out your peace on those we know and love, giving us wisdom and knowledge on how to help those around us. So we ask you, Lord, to fill us with your spirit this day. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day that we are here in your house, gathered together and listening to your word. We pray that you pour out the Holy Spirit onto each and every one of us and open our eyes and our hearts to what is happening around us. Help us to be grateful for our community, our world. Help us to know how to look after it, to be there when a friend or neighbor stumbles. Help us to say the right words at the right time to be passionate about the things which make a difference in our lives. Help us to be passionate to our neighbors and our community. Lord, show us where we need to work harder for ourselves, to help us to be better people, to be closer to you. We fall so many times, yet you forgive us you love us. You are the perfect father. And we are your children. You are the shepherd and we are the sheep. So Lord, steer us in the right path. Protect us. Keep us safe. When we struggle, walk by the side of us and help us to know your presence. To feel your presence. As we walk out today, Help us to open our eyes to <laughs> your Eden, your world, and let us see it through different perspective. Help us to make the difference. We ask this in your name. Amen. Let us, let us say together the Lord's Prayer. We will pause after every line. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank God for who he is and his abundant faithfulness. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pray for God's rule and reign to become a reality. Give us this day our daily bread. Pray for God's daily provision in your life. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Confess your sins to the Lord and forgive people who have wronged you. Lead us not into temptation. Ask for God to guide you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Deliver us from evil. Pray for God's protection against any of the strategies of Satan. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So we're going to close with prayer. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples, and see that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. 
Amen. Amen.